E, aici este o discuție lungă și cred că stăm până mâine dimineața să discutăm chestiuni literare. Aici se plantea una chestiune muy larga și cred că trebuie să stăm esta mañana por la mañana hablando de literatura. Dar foarte scurt pot să vă spun că uh, procesul de scriere a cărților mele este foarte ambigu. Pero así, por resumir, puedo decirle que el proceso de escritura de mis textos es muy ambiguo. Yo no, no controlo el escrito mío, sino de parte de Inca, el escrito me controla de mí. De hecho, puedo decir que yo no eh, controlo exactamente la escritura, sino al contrario, es más bien la escritura la que me, la que me controla a mí. De ejemplo, el hombre me preguntó, ¿de qué escritas a ti de gruesa? Oamenii nu mai citesc acum nici 10 rânduri pe Facebook, se plictisesc. Por ejemplo, la gente me pregunta, ¿pero por qué sigues escribiendo libros tan gruesos cuando la gente no resiste más de 10 líneas en Facebook? Se aburre. Și eu le răspund întotdeauna, eu nu controlez mărimea cărții mele. Cărțile mele ies la mărima pe care o vor ele. Y yo siempre tengo la misma respuesta, yo no controlo el grosor de mis libros. Mis libros tienen el grosor que ellos mismos quieren. Dacă o carte a mea vrea să fie de o mie de pagini, de o mie se face. Și si un libro mio quiere tener mil páginas, pues tendrá mil páginas. Și apoi, mărimea unei cărți este o figură de stil. Și, además, también, que, por otra parte, el, el grosor de un libro es una figura de stil. Gândiți-vă că vioara dă un sunet, viola dă alt sunet, violoncelul dă alt sunet și contrabasul alt sunet. Piense, por ejemplo, que un violín ofrece un sonido, una viola, otro sonido, un cello, otro sonido, un bajo, otro sonido. Marima contase. Por tanto, el tamaño cuenta. No puedes si se te imaginas que Ulises de Joyce ha tenido tanta chinzas de páginas. Y no puedes pensar que Ulises de Joyce habría podido tener 50 páginas. Un haiku tiene que ser muy fuerte, Mick. Un haiku tiene que ser muy breve. Iar o epopeie trebuie să fie foarte mare. Și o epopeie trebuie să fie largă. Deci există o legătură între mărimea cărții și sensul ei. Așa poate să existe o relație între tamaniul de libro și su su sentido. Hello everyone, hola gracias a todos. Pro aris et fosis, por el altar y por el hogar. Y hoy tenemos Klaus, someone which is special, is one of the winners here in La Feria de Libre Mexico. So let's try. Thank you, sir, for joining us in Cuenta Moon Libro and Ahora Canada. Gracias. There's times, and this is something that we talk about, especially for people in Canada, all the people, Latin people, in the, the ones that travel there, about the platonification. We call it platonification, which means something that you want to aspire. It's an It's something you wanna you wanna get to that point. So you want that's the dreams you have. Mm -hmm. What means the Platon or the Platonification for you? What what means, and especially with the Romans, which is Spanish, which is Roman, Romania, which is all. What's the relationship you can uh, find? Plato uh, was. Um an idealistic uh, philosopher. He thought um, that uh, the real world was not uh, the, um, the world that we, we feel every day, but um, uh, the world of ideas, the world uh, of, um, um, I don't know, poetic inspiration, sure. the world of the gods, in a way. So he believed that our mind, our thoughts, uh, our brain is the real world. Um, the other one is uh, only uh, a shadow, a shadow of uh, of uh, the real, of the real one. So we are all uh, um, uh, de deluded, all the, we are deluded by, by everything we see. Uh, we can only aspire, as you said, to a superior world. But I think this um, aspiration of all the people towards something they cannot find in, uh, in the world, but uh, something idealistic, something th that you cannot touch, as you cannot touch the moon with gotcha. your fingers, um, gotcha. is uh, maybe the most beautiful uh, feature of humanity. Um, the human being is the only one 
who can have uh, wishes towards infinity, towards something that you cannot, you can never um, get to touch with your fingers. Um, and this is a platonic heritage. Sir, and I know your time is short, and this is the last question. Okay. Thank you for this. I, I okay. really appreciate for the people that they are showing up. And I want to ask this. What do you think? Is the world, is the material world the one that changed the ideal world? As, or is the ideal world is the one that changed the material world? This is an, you know, philosophic issue. It has been for many years. Marx just says that needs to change yes. the um, material world in order to yes. change the idealistic world. What do you think? And thank you for that. And that's. I don't think anyone um, defined what is reality and what is not reality. I think uh, this is the most important philosophical question um, um, about the relationship between consciousness and reality. Uh, does consciousness? produce reality or, rea or the other way around. Of course, uh, the materialism, uh, including Marxism, uh, consider that uh, uh, the real world is the real thing. It's uh, everything that we have. There's nothing else but uh, the material world. But all the idealists, uh, starting with uh, Plato and uh, um, Zenon and the other idealistic uh, uh, philosophers, think that actually the world of ideas um, determine what we see in the real life. Nobody can tell this. Uh, you can have a scientific uh, approach, you can have a religious approach, a philosoph philosophic approach, or a poetic approach, but you, you can never be sure. And this is, um, in my opinion, a good thing, because this is the fate of humanity, not to have uh, um, um, very strong ideas about uh, uh, our lives, but to doubt all the time. Uh, doubt, as uh, um, Descartes said, uh, is um, the most important uh, uh, clue for uh, our lives. Uh, cog um, uh, cogito ergo dubito, dubito ergo sum. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. There, Thank you. I know you're very much smarter than I am, but there's a there's a quote I want to share with you. Okay. It's philosopher center is aletus, Latin. Mm, yeah. The philo philosopher it's always happy. Yeah. And this is a book, extraordinary book for Alexander Jolie. He wrote about yeah. Socrates, mm -hmm. and he's an, an also a great yeah. philosopher. He is a quadruplexic guy and he grow this. Thank you, sir. I Thank agree. you.